So just to show you here, I have the four channel Motorola um, Radius M1225. You can also check what version we have. Right here where it says model M44DGC. Um, but you'll see more about this in the software. All right, so we're at our workstation. We have the radio, the battery, and a power cable. Um, the one important thing, that cable I just threw. So this cable right here is, which I'm gonna have it linked in the description, but it's gonna be what I'm using today. It's one of these FTDI little USB chips. I got it from that Blue Max 49er. You can see it's USB to the jack, the microphone jack on the Motorola. Uh, you'll need this. Um, there's like repeater builder will tell you not to use stuff like this, and I can agree. Um, use a serial port if you can, but if you have access to a serial port and a computer that can run the serial port, um, you probably don't even need this video. So pick up this, works with modern hardware, and I'll show you how to get it working. All right, here comes our hardware. We're gonna hook this radio up to power. See, I brought my car battery up here because I don't have um, what I need to hook the radio into the wall, and the wall is not gonna supply the right voltage. So highly recommend, if you don't know anything about electricity, even if you have the stuff, just, just bring your car battery because it's gonna work with your car battery. It's 12 volt, it's got enough power, etc. So take your car battery out, bring it up here. But the way we're gonna make this work, scotch tape. Give it a little tug, nothing crazy. Uh, we don't want to pull it off, we just want to make sure that the wind is not going to knock it off. In case I cut that last part out, all we're doing is taping down the terminals and securing it with another piece right there. So tape there and there. And that makes the whole thing to stay together. Now, ignore the mess. Had a house fire. Um, so, my setup is kind of outside. But, what's important here is I'm not going to plug this radio up until we complete this next step. And this next step is the hardest. It might even be a separate video. So, here's probably the hardest part is setting up a and this is very important. Emulator. Um, the RSS software will not work with virtualization. We actually have to trick the computer into thinking we're on a different kind of computer. So I'll show you what that means real quick. And I'm going to supply these files um, below and you can try them. I can't promise that you'll work. So I'm going to supply the files. If they don't work, this might either be included in the same video at the end, or included right now, or I'm not sure how I'm going to do this yet, but you're going to need to set this up. But I'm going to go over this now. It's either going to be in this video or in a different video. Check the description. So, to set up our emulator, um, I recommend going with a Socket 8 machine with this ASUS like motherboard with an Intel Pentium Pro. I'm running 90, 90 megahertz. Um, simply because I know the software likes slower CPU, so that's why I'm running 32 megabytes of memory. And then for display, we're running the S3 Verge Diamond itself. Um, I know, I think it's pretty high end or something, um, but I, it's just what I know works. This is currently what I got. Running the standard PS2 mouse, two button. 
the ISA 16 Sound Blaster with the PNP, all 32, running these. For network, I'm running the slip card with AMD PC Net. Um, this is the tricky part, comms. So I've only opened up Serial 1 because that's what my system has. And I made sure to host Serial Pass Through. Okay. And here's the important part. Let me plug in the FTDI chip. Um, first, you're going to want to open Device Manager, though, and then plug this into your computer. Preferably, don't have too much stuff plugged in because I've noticed it kind of messes with things. So, I've unplugged most of my USB peripherals. I'm not going to stick this chip in. And you should see ports calm. It might take a second, it might show as an unknown device, nothing's wrong, you just need to let it download the driver. Mine's already set up for COM1. If yours isn't, right click, properties, and we're going to go to port settings, advanced, and change that number to something that isn't in use but is COM1 through 4. So if COM one's in use, COM three and four's in use while you're using two. If all of them are in use, I couldn't tell you what to do. You need to figure out why these are in use. Uh, Google's your friend. Um, here's all my settings. Should be default. I didn't change anything. Same with this. Worked. But COM one, that's important. So because mine's on COM one, serial port one, serial port one pass through. If yours is two, you need two. Um, I wouldn't do any more than you have to, simply because I don't want to confuse things, and I know this is the right port. As for storage, um, this is what I have set up. It just works. I'm not changing it. Um, now, hardness. You're going to new. You're going to give it a name, some settings. So, like, you see this one's 100, 11, 20 channels, 16 headers, blah, blah, blah. You can copy this by hitting new. Specifying a location. Setting the settings, which for me, I think I did type and scroll all the way down, and I think I chose this one. For floppy, we're going to do a 3.5144, which you're going to set here. And then for CD-ROM, we're doing the Atopi, O1 channel, 48 speed, 86 box CD-ROM. Nothing for removable devices and nothing for other peripherals. We hit OK. Saves the setting, launches a virtual box. Now, if you're doing this for the first time, it's not going to immediately boot to Windows 98. Um, because you're going to have to do something. I'll kind of genuine, like, kind of walk it through a little here because I think I'm going to do this all in one video and I don't want this to be too long and too complicated um, so I'm hoping the link I put in the bottom works but if it doesn't I'll come up with a new video but in that new video you're going to launch click media and you're going to mount that CD-ROM with a uh, with the ISO file for Windows 98 I'll provide a link in the description for that um, so do that, and then you're going to have to either look up or I'll make a video on setting up Windows 98 for the first time, because it's a, it's a little much, a um, little complicated. Let's just hope that when you launch 86 bucks, it just works. All right, so now that we're here, uh, there's a few things you can do. Um, if you've got mine, then you're already set up. All you got to do is hit start. There are programs and then launch the radio software. If you're not set up, you're gonna have to do this. So I'm in 86 box right now. This virtual hard disk, you're gonna have to mount this. If you search up disk management or create partitions or anything with partitions, if you're trying to get the disk management, that's the only thing you need. You're going to get the disk management. After it loads your virtual disk service, you're going to have to hit action. And hopefully mine will load soon. I don't want to hang up on this too long. But you're going to hit action. And you're going to mount or attach a drive. And you're going to choose this VHD file for the ROM. So here we go. Attach VHD. Browse. And you're going to select it. You're going to mount it, 
Um, mine's open, so I can't mount it, but once yours is mounted, um, the only thing you got to do is, just like a normal hard drive, you're going to open it up, and you're going to put it where it should go in your files. So, like, I put it on the desktop for Windows 98, so now I'm back here. I put it on the desktop, or I think I put in documents, actually. Yeah, I put in documents, I put the folder in there, and then you come in here, and just like you're using a normal computer, you run the setup. Then it installs, and then you can use the software. So, now that we got that out of the way, let's actually do the radio part. Here. We're gonna plug up the radio. I like doing the power first. Make sure the radio is off. It is. I'll take the power cable. Can't go wrong with this. Hook it up. Let's see if the radio turns on. It does. Alright, sweet. Turn it off. Plug my COM port in through the microphone jack. It's connected, turn the radio back on, full volume, sweet. Alright, now, oh, I should probably went over this. Um, your software might not, actually, that's pretty concerning. Oh, come on now. So, if you hit view and you hit computer configuration, make sure you got COM1 selected. Because this ain't working, I'm swapping the COM2. Fill again. Turn the radio off, back on. Wrong COM2. We're going to launch the box. Immediately open settings. I'm going to do this. Make sure that I COM2 and host serial pipe through. Hit OK. Save. Loading back up the software, and and you're gonna have to troubleshoot this. I mean, it's just, it's just the name of the game. Read. All right. Computer configuration. Com two. Read. There we go. It's working. If you see this bar, it's working. Alright. So, and it's telling me that it's worked. So, first thing we're going to do, save. Click save. Give it a name up here. Give it a name down here. Uh, do variations. I'm not exactly sure. Actually, I can check real quick. I'm not exactly sure the format in which you need to save it. I just know that you do. Um, oh, MRSS 1225 archive. So, see, I got no clue what's going on. I just saved the files and I have no clue. I just know that you need to save these. Um, I think you name it up here. I couldn't tell you. Just try not to brick the radio. But, like, I'm gonna name this. 
and hit OK. And see, there's this original. Um, yeah, I, I got no clue. Just save it. That's all I can tell you. And then if you do brick it, then you're going to have to find this out, but at least you have the files. All right, moving on. First thing we're going to do is, nope, not that. Let's look at our radio info. So again, model number, the radio we have, serial number of the radio. But here's where it's interesting. So here's our band. And here's the wattage. And of course, four modes, as in I can have four channels. If you have the LCD version, this is going to be higher. I think it's like 20 or something. Um, but this band, if you try to program out this band, we're going to have to do what's called the shift trick. Um, I can think of another YouTube channel for showing that. Um, but uh, we'll see. We're going to come over here to mode. This is going to be our programming. So here I have my first channel, um, which this is backwards. I would explain why it didn't work earlier. It's supposed to be TPL. So find the frequencies in the program. So I like TPL 123 and. I would like to, on channel one, I would like to receive only that. Or, wait, no, that's not backwards. I had that right. Yeah, I had that right. Wait. Yeah, I don't know, ignore me. I'm just gonna program the radio. You can kinda just watch me. Now, once you have that, I recommend saving it again just to load it up in case your radio crashes and you know it used to work. Or I don't know. But what I do know is we're going to hit program radio. It's going to write radio should beep. Once it writes. Beep. We're now going to shut everything down. Alright, she's programmed, so I'm going to go ahead and undo everything. Take out the chip. I'm turn off the radio. Take out my thing. Put my cable where it goes. Before doing anything else, we're going to unplug the radio without dropping it, preferably. We're now going to take off the battery, which I'm not going to show this because I don't want to redo the camera, but I'll see you at the car.